Hello everyone, welcome to Knowledge India once again. This is the second part of the tutorial where we are talking about identity and access management. Uh, so in this tutorial, we are going to talk about roles. In case you want to look at the first one, the link is available uh, at the top. You can go ahead and visit that. So we have already created uh, different users, uh, roles, and we understood how to generate policies. Now let us go ahead and see what do we mean by roles. Now role is a concept uh, within AWS IAM which you can use in order to give permission or in order to authorize a particular AWS service to call API, APIs or take actions of other AWS services. Let us take an example to understand it easily. Let us say you have developed uh, an application, a web application, and that web application allows users to upload different files, images, let us say. And these image files, you'll be saving it into an S3 bucket. Now, once you have uh, developed this application, you need to go ahead and put uh, this application on an EC2 machine so that it goes into production and everybody can go ahead and use it. Now, at, in the first stage during development, you can very well go ahead and make use of your own user keys, let's say, your user is this particular thing, I am text, time test. You can go ahead and make use of the security credentials, right? For example, this thing, which we had already generated. So you can make use of this access key and secret key and put it in, put it as part of your ID. It could be Visual Studio, it could be Eclipse, whatever. And with that, you'll be able to call different S3 related actions because you are allowed to do that. But when your code is ready and you need to deploy it on an EC2 machine, it is not advisable that you take your keys and put it on the EC2 machine because anybody who logs into that machine in order to do any maintenance can copy your keys and then basically abuse you. So let us not do that. So in order to uh, ensure that it works smooth, there is concept of roles. So what we will do is we will go ahead and create a role. Let us call it S3 role. Okay. And... Now, as we said, with roles, you can give access to any AWS service so that it can call or it can take actions for the other AWS service. So let's say for our given scenario, we want that the EC2 machine where we are going to host our application, that should be able to call AWS APIs, which, which APIs? S3 related APIs. So first of all, who is going to call? AWS EC2 is going to call. So we'll select that EC2 is going to call this. And then what it would be able to call that we can give all those permissions with the help of a policy. Now we can go ahead and choose one of the existing ones. I'm just going to choose S3 full access, which means any S3 related actions can be called from this particular EC2 machine. If you want, you can create your own custom policy as well and, and you can choose that one here. Let's say next. And that's it. You can see that your role is just about to get created. This is the ARN for your role. And we'll go ahead and we'll say create role. Now, the, in the trusted entities, you can see, um, let me just show you. In the trusted entities or in the trust relationship, we have explained that it will it can be assumed by EC2. So this role can be assumed by EC2. So what we are essentially trying to say here is if you go ahead and launch an EC2 instance, during the launch of EC2 instance, EC2 instance will assume this role. And after that, the application which you have made, the web application, you can host it on that EC2 machine. And while people are trying to upload uh, their files and it goes and sits in S3 or any S3 related action which gets called from that EC2 machine would be honored or would be accepted by AWS and it will work. Now, let me show you. If you try to launch an instance, let us choose an AMI. Choose this one and see the step. In the third step, you have IAM role. You can see the S3 role is appearing here. So remember, an EC2 can assume a role only while it is getting launched. You cannot attach the role later on. So while launching itself, you need to give it a role. Okay. So remember this part. So now we can go ahead and launch this EC2 machine. And after this, you can host your application here without embedding your keys. And after even then, everything would work smoothly. So that's the purpose of roles. Please understand this. Not only EC2 
all the so many other services also can assume role whenever they have to you know they have to uh, take action or they have to call any aws api so roles are really useful also you can use roles in order to give access to users who are not part of your account right that means let's say you have your aws account there's a totally other aws account uh, you can go ahead and create a role and allow the user from other AWS account to basically assume that role and after that this user would be able to do anything which is which you allow as part of policy to do in within your account he'll be able to do that so that's great that's about roles and uh, <clears throat> in addition to that so we have already looked at policies you can come and look at your account settings basically you can strengthen the password if you want here and all such things you can always take credential report. If, if you download the report, you'll be able to see how many IM users are there, when did they use their account, and all of such things you can go ahead and see here. So we've covered all of this. Now, one more thing which I want to explain you. The users which we are creating here are IM users, and IM users are going to be used, or their work is going to be while operating with AWS services. So an IAM user can go ahead and create an EC2, it can terminate an EC2, start, stop, deal with S3 related actions and anything which are AWS services. You should not confuse it with application level users. Meaning this IAM test, IAM uh, user which you see on the screen, with this you will not go ahead and log into the operating system of your EC2 or with this you will not go ahead and connect to your RDS and do your SQL queries, right? Those things are those specific application level users. The IAM users are there to operate on AWS. So with the IAM user, you will be able to call different AWS APIs or you'll be able to log into the management console and you can do whatever action he is allowed to do, okay? Um, so I hope uh, that makes sense. Um, it is really uh, recommended that once you have created the account, uh, don't use your root account anymore. Rather, create IAM users and make use of that. You can also go ahead and set up MFA uh, within a user. If you go ahead and see here in the this particular section, uh, you will have option to set up MFA. So please do that. And in the dashboard, you'll be able to see how effectively you are using IAM. Okay, so if you have any doubts, go ahead and please uh, write it in the comment section. I'll try to reply you the same. And if you like the video, please go ahead and share it with your friends. Subscribe to the channel to remain updated. Thank you. Bye-bye.